pulls this, this accusation against us, we have Yeshua who represents us as our heavenly Jewish attorney. Yeah. Amen. So we have the best Jewish attorney, yeah. and it's free. Yeah. Okay. We, because when Satan comes and he's the accuser of the brethren, we need a specialist. Let's be honest. We don't just need any attorney. We need a specialist. Yes, that's right. And Yeshua is a nice, a nice. Turn your neighbor and say a nice. Yeshua is a nice Jewish specialist. Every time the accuser of the brethren comes before Yahweh, Yeshua says, yes, he, he did that. Yes, he's a snake. Yes, he did that. But he's mine. He's forgiven. He's blood washed. He's absolved. He absolved. He doesn't sit behind the screen in Rome. He sits in the presence of the Heavenly Father, and he says, they're mine. Yes, the accusation is true, but they're washed, they're forgiven, and they've been excused by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because Yeshua can represent you. He has your best intentions at heart. He wants what's best for you. But the person who brings something up, they caught something in your life, they're like a shark. They catch something, and they're ready to tell it to the whole congregation. If you gave them the microphone, everybody would know it by next week. And boy, our flesh loves that. Our flesh wants to be the one to broadcast the good news. Did you hear what? That, that Mordecai went into a topless bar? Did you hear what? Another, another brother was caught in adult. Another? Yeah, another. Our flesh wants to be the first to announce the bad news. It's true. That's your flesh. That's pride. That's, not, that's, that's the characteristic of Satan. Are you with me? Yes. Unkosher friendships. Yes. Gossip. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Gossip is evil intention to destroy someone's reputation even though the facts are true. Now here's a, here's a problem. When you have a friend who's a gossiper, you also have become a person who is accusing the brethren because you become a listener. In order for gossipers to function, they need listeners. They need receptacles. And you have been, I have been, the receptacle of many gossipers. Turn to neighbor and say, you've been a receptacle. You've been a receptacle. We all have. We all have. I've listened to things about Mary Nina. She's listened to things about me. I've listened to things about Abraham. You've listened to things about me. We've all done it. And when we are listeners to the gossip, guess what? We have unkosher friends. What do you think is going to happen? That unkosher gossiper who takes truth, but instead of bringing, taking these truths to the person and bringing restoration and healing, takes it to as many ears as they can locate to destroy. So the motive is evil. The motive is dastardly. The motive is not of the Father. The motive is demonic. What makes a person a, a gossiper is the truth. The facts are true, but the motive is murderous. Do you understand what I'm saying? The motive is murderous. And that is unkosher. And when you've got an unkosher gossiping friend, guess what? You touch that friend. What is the biblical principle of the transfer of clean and unclean? Why do we anoint our elders? Why do we lay hands on our elders? Why, why did Moshe take the 70 leaders of Israel and anoint them? Yahweh says, because I want you to put the same ruach that is on you. I want you to put the same ruach that is on you. I want you to put that same ruach upon them. And when you touch a gossiper, you become spiritually defiled. Because you allow them to touch your ears and worse than that, your heart. Don't talk about my sister that way. Don't talk about my brother that way. I don't want to hear that. That's how you deal with that. I don't want to hear it. Are you with me? Yes. Gossipers are unkosher friends. Number, number 12, slanderer. And you know what makes Satan Satan? He's the personification of all three. Gossip, slander, and talebearer. Because all three are manifestations of murder. Gossip, slander, and tailbearer are all manifestations of a murderous spirit. And so Satan is a personification of gossip, slander, and tailbearer. 
Some of you are so puffed up with pride, we're all puffed up right now. Well, I don't, I don't gossip. Okay, good. That means, but what about the friends? Do you have any, you have any friends that, that like to call you and just unload? And what are they unloading? Crap. C-R-A-P. Oh, I'm not going to that place anymore. <laughs> the rabbi is using profanity. Hey, what you see with me is what you get, honey. I'm the same way on Tuesday as I am on Shabbat. You come to my house, you get the same treatment that you do on Shabbat. I is what I is. I ain't changing unless you see what changes me. I ain't no phony. I'm just a New York boy gone straight. A crooked New Yorker that's been fixed. <laughs> Turn your neighbor and say, have you been fixed? Have you been fixed? <laughs> that didn't come out right. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Alright, where were we? Slanderer. 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 <laughs> Slander. Listen, slander is a false report without any truth, void of truth, again designed to damage and destroy a person's reputation and a person's character. So slander is, is a lie. It's an outright falsehood. It's a lie. Gossip is a murdering spirit. Slander is a murdering spirit. Are you with me? But gossip is true. Slander is a lie. Slander is the act of issuing an intentional false report to injure or destroy or malign someone else in order to make that person feel better. Don't, doesn't our flesh feel real good when we're, when we're exposing the ugliness or the shortcomings of others? Don't we feel better? Some people have such low self-esteem that in order to elevate their esteem before Yahweh, they've got to find someone, some poor, some poor guy who's struggling to live as a Messianic Israelite in the congregation and put him down. Because by putting him down, they, they, they feel better. It's like the Maryland sniper. This guy is a jerk, murderer, a failure in everything he's ever done. He, sees, he, he, he fantasizes himself as a, as a spiritual Schwarzenegger, a Rambo, who gets his, his self-esteem by destroying other human beings. Okay? So slander, we hope and pray that they catch him. But my goodness, that's a terrible situation. I mean, could you imagine just pumping gas and, and, not, and not feeling like getting out of the car because you could be shot? It's crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's insane. It's amazing. We just gotta hope and pray that he's caught. But slander yes. is designed to injure and kill in in the spirit. Are you with me? Slander is an outright lie. It's an out out falsehood. So it what's worse, gossip or slander? Both. They're both manifestations of wickedness. They're both manifestations of evil. They're both manifestations of murder. One happens to be true. The other happens to be a lie. But they both result in the same thing, which is the destruction of the, of the character and the assassination of the character of another human being. There's no convalescent. There's nothing, there's nothing beneficial in that kind of conversation. I have people in the congregation come to me all the time. The rabbi, I, I, I slept with this person. I shouldn't have done that. The rabbi, I struggled with drugs. No problem. They're never thrown out of the car. Never, never in a million years. Because we don't throw people out for sin. We're a hospital for sinners. You understand? We're a hospital. But, but you start talking about my wife. You start talking about me. I'll have your butt out before you can blink your eye. I can't. I'm not laughing either. And people know that. They've been asked to leave this congregation. And you start talking about your brothers and sisters and slandering them and lying about them, you'll be gone. I'll, I'll make sure you're gone. That's my job, to protect the sheep. But you come to me with a problem. You're struggling with fornication. You're struggling with drugs. You're struggling with alcohol. Welcome on board. You, that means you're part of the human race. <laughs> huh? 
We're human beings. No, that's right. We're human beings. We all need chesed and we all need Yahweh's mercy. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So slander is a false report design, given to intentionally injure or destroy another human being. Total fabrication whose motive is character assassination. With me? So what's better? Slander or, um, or gossip? Neither one. Neither one. Because who is the personification of slander and gossip? S period, A period, N. And hey, brothers and sisters, it may not be you. You may not be the gossip. You may not be the slander. I might be the listener. But are you a receptacle? Have you put yourself in a position where you're hearing this, where you're hearing this garbage at least twice a week? Some of you are looking. Some of you are looking guilty just sitting there. You know why? Because you, you know that you listen to this stuff. Well, what you've done? Let me let me share with you what you've done. What you've done is you become defiled, unkosher, according to Torah. Sure, if I listen, to, if I if I look close enough at Linda's life, I'm gonna find things, and 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 if someone else look at Linda's Linda Davis's life, they're gonna find things. But if you love Linda, you're going to come to her. A, you're not going to slander her ever. You're never going to lie about her. You're never going to slander her. But if you find something that's true, you'll go to her. You'll go to her. You won't come to me. Because the odds are that she'll receive you and understand what you're saying. And she'll have a chance to correct her behavior. But slander doesn't care if it's true or not. Slander invents complete charges. And by the way, that's how Satan destroys congregations. I want you to know that. Okay? I want you to know that's how Satan destroys congregations, through slander. He sends some of his disciples in there, Satanists, or people who are not born again, they're not walking in the Ruach HaKodesh, and they'll put, you know, they'll put a man or a woman and, and create a disturbance, and then get a false accusation going against the rabbi or the pastor, the rabbi did this, the rabbi did this, there was you know, sexual, sexual harassment, whatever, and before you know it, they, they, go, they come in twos, and I've read this in books, they come in twos and they come in threes, now, pretty soon you've got three false witnesses, and they're slandering the rabbi, and pretty soon the congregation, or the pastor, this congregation is split. Mm -hmm. Understand? And they're, they, they're sent. Satan sends them in pairs. Because he's the great what? Counterfeiter. Yeshua said that his Tommy deemed two by two. So when Satan comes to destroy a congregation, listen, don't talk. When Satan comes to destroy a congregation or a ministry, he sends them in pairs. Why? Because the slanderer needs a receptacle. Right. The gossiper needs a receptacle. And according to Torah, every word is established in the mouth of two or three true witnesses or false witnesses. And in order to establish slander, you, Satan's got to produce two or three witnesses. Are you with me? So brothers and sisters, we can't stop slander, can we? We can't stop Gossip, can't we? Because we have to go out of the world to stop that kind of stuff. We can't stop that. But you can stop listening and not doing. When you stop doing and you stop listening, you keep your life kosher and you've got kosher friends. And if you've got unkosher friends, turn them into a kosher friend. Say, look, you've got a problem with your mouth. You've got a problem telling me all about Adele. I don't want to know all about it. If, it, if it's not kind, lovely, per, turn to Philippians 4. I just want to obey, to obey the Ruach. Uh -huh. Go to Philippians 4. Go to Philippians 4. Quickly. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Is anyone enjoying? Yes. I said, is anyone enjoying? Yes. Come on now, Rabbi. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Thank you, brother. I think we got a new Alonzo Hall. Oh, yes! <laughs> He's irrepl that's replacement theology. <laughs> no one who ever met Alonzo will ever forget Alonzo. I know. Come on, Rabbi. Don't stop now, brother. He was something else. I, I missed that. I missed that, brother. He used to come from West Palm Beach every Shabbat. And then when I would say something through the Ruach, he'd go, Now, that's why I came. <laughs> remember? You remember, Brother Eliza? Yes. How sweet it is. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. 
Philippians 4. Um, I'll tell you in just a second. Four eight. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Let's start with verse seven. Philippians four seven. The peace of Elohim. You want the peace of Shalom? You don't. You don't have peace in your life. You're walking with Yeshua. You're obeying Torah, but you don't have peace. It just may be that you have some unkosher friends in your life that you need to dissect yourself from and, 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 and cut yourself from so you can have the peace of, of Yahweh. The peace of Elohim, which surpasses all understanding, which is designed to guard your heart and mind through the Messiah Yeshua for the rest. How many want this rest? For this rest, the Shabbat, brothers, whatever is noble, whatever is righteous, whatever is clean. Well, I thought the Bridge Hadashah doesn't teach Torah. Whenever you see the word clean in the Renewed Covenant, it's a reference to the clean rules of Torah. When Rav Shaul, a Jewish rabbi, thinks of clean, he doesn't think of soap. When Rav Shaul, a Jewish rabbi, writes a, a, an epistle, he doesn't think of Amway. Or a box of Tide, like cleaning our laundry. When Rav Shaul uses the word clean, it's a Hebraic idiom. It's a Hebraic reference to the purity of Yahweh's eternal rules. Chukim and Mishpatim. And so what Rav Shaul says is, brothers, here's how you have peace. you got to get rid of these unkosher friends. And, and, and have brothers who are noble, brothers and sisters who are righteous, brothers and sisters who are clean. Well, I understand, Rabbi, if they're washing the blood, aren't they clean? Yes and no. They've begun the process of sanctification, but now they've got to be sanctified daily by obeying the rules and the laws and the chukim and mishpatim of Yahweh and becoming like the master and not slandering and lying about other people or gossiping about other people because that is the same spirit that Satan brings to the throne of Yahweh when he's the accuser of the brethren. And I'm telling you, if you're going to engage in gossip and slander, go ahead and eat your pig, go ahead and buy your pumpkin, do all the things you make fun of that the church is doing, because you are still unclean. Uh -huh. That's right. And when we can murder with a sword, with a rifle, like the sniper in Maryland, or we can, we can, we can snipe people with our tongue. That's right. And it's always in whispering. If you were so proud of what you're saying, then why don't you get up and give testimony how what a jerk Johan is or a jerk Rabbi Moshe is or what or what Adele is doing or what Brian is. Or, why don't you get up and if you're so proud of, of 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 everything you're whispering on the phone and telling people in secret and why don't you get up and tell everybody what you do during the week because you're not proud of it and that's why that's a whispering spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Come on, Rabbi. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Go back to Philippians 4 8. Whatever is righteous, whatever is clean, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report. Turn to your neighbor and say good report. Good report. Whatever is of good report, if there's any upright, any. You, we have to look for what's salvageable, not what's destructible. Every of us, every one of us has something that is something uprighteous in our lives. Something good in our lives. Yahweh says, that's what I want you to talk about. Something positive in our lives. That's what Ted, Ted, Ted used to be a three a day uh, uh, a cigarette man. Ted used to be the Marlboro man, but he's come back. That's positive. Right? The positive. Or, 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 or you used to be a liar. You used to be an adulterer. You used to be a, a foreigner. You used to be a pusher. Now the only thing you're pushing is the good news, the Bessarot of Yeshua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you still sing, yes. So we talk about the good reports, not the evil reports. Because every, every human being has good reports and evil reports. I got a good report. Thank you, brother. That's right. So we look for the best in people. Well, look, Yeshua says whatever is clean, whatever is lovely, whatever is of a good report, if there's any redeemable uprightness, if there's any praise, think on these things. He's not saying if they're sainted by the Roman Catholic Church. He doesn't say that. He says if there's anything in their life that is praiseworthy, 
that the Father can get glory. That's what you concentrate. That's what you focus. That's what you look at. That's what you zero in on. That, that, that. Yes. Not the day. Are you with me? She, she still doesn't keep all the Torah, but she used to have a, a vow, foul mouth, and since she's been coming to B'nai Yeshua, she doesn't curse anymore. Think on that. That's a, that's a good report. That's a good report. Amen? Think on the things. Everybody's got some report in their life that can be considered told. Everybody's got things that we can be, can be considered told. We're all making progress. Philippians 1, 6, He that began this work in you will complete it until the day of Messiah Yeshua. So we have gossip. It's got to go. Get rid of the gossiping friends. There's no other way. Either they reform or you circumcise them out of your life. Ooh. Thank you, Father. Either they, either they reform or you get circumcised right now. Say, look, you've got to stop. I want to be your friend. I like you as a person. There's some good good reports in your life. And Yahweh and Yahweh doesn't want you to be unkosher. I can't have you in my life as an unkosher friend. Because then I become unkosher. So please, I don't want to go to the round. I don't want to start gossiping about you, telling stuff that's true, but designed to destroy you. I want to say, I want to I want to redeem your wonderful personality if I can only get you to stop doing this, that, and the other thing. Are you with me? Look at verse 9. What you have learned, what you have received, what you've seen in me. Look, seen in me. Practice these. And the Elohim of peace shall be with you. People say, oh, we're not supposed, non-Jews are not supposed to keep Torah. Ephraimites are not supposed to keep Torah. Really. Rashi says, what well, you've seen me practice, do. Acts 21. He rushes back to Jerusalem to keep Shavuot, Pentecost. Yeah. Every Shabbat, he goes to the Shabbat to look for people of like mind. Yeah. So he said, now when you've seen me practice, you go practice. If he practices Torah in his own life, keeping the Shabbat, keeping the Moadim, keeping the Chukim and Mishpatim, and then tells the Galatians not to practice it, he's a hypocrite. The definition of hypocrite is, I'm living Torah, but don't you. That's right. That's hypocrisy. Are you with me? Okay, look at verse, let's not get there today. Verse 8. Whatever is clean, that's what you are to be yoked with. We're so natural. Turn to your neighbor and say natural. Natural. Let's try that again. Natural. Natural. That we think of clean and unclean in terms of what we eat and what we drink alone. Yes, we are Torah observant. Yes, we, we keep the laws of, of Kashrut. Yes, we keep the laws of Neda. And, and, and Messianic women should not have relations with their husbands for two weeks of the month. Yes, we do all those things. But we don't neglect the inner matters of the heart. Are you with me? Yeshua said, out of the heart proceedeth adulterer, adultery, fornication, theft, lying. Out of the heart. Are you with me? We don't want to just be kosher without, as a witness to the church. We want to be kosher within. And to be kosher within, we may have to, to see if any of our friends are unkosher. All about friendship, part two. It's all about friendship. Turn to your neighbor and say, all about friendship. All about friendship. Number three, we have gossiper, true, but designed to destroy. Slanderer, untrue, designed to destroy. And lastly, we have part of this unkosher friends. We have number 12, tail bearing. 13, pardon me. Tail bearing. Well, what on earth is the difference between gossip, slander, and tail bearing? Listen. A tail bearer doesn't mean you bear a tail and you're in your in your derriere. <laughs> a tail bearer means you got an unclean problem with the mouth. It doesn't mean you have a tail, contrary to evolutionary Darwinianism. Are you with me? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Next time someone tells you we came from Abe, say, sorry, I have never had a tail and I don't plan on getting one. <laughs> tail bearer. An indi is an individual, listen, who, add, who takes, takes gossip and adds malicious intent to the gossip or takes slandering and adds malicious intent. So, 
A talebearer is someone who is a slanderer by nature, or by fallen nature, should we say? Hello? By fallen nature, they are slanderers. They lie about other people. They make up stories to make themselves better. They lower other people to lift themselves up and make them somewhat holier or more set apart in your eyes. They lift themselves up by slandering. What's slandering? Lying and character assassinating other people. But to become a talebearer, you've got to add maliciousness. In other words, a tail. A, a, a slanderer lies. You with me? A slanderer lies to destroy. But what makes a, tail be a slanderer a talebearer? A vindictiveness and a malicious. The, inten the intensity of maliciousness takes a slanderer and demotes them to a we even more unkosher, a talebearer. A gossiper adds maliciousness and they become a talebearer. A slanderer adds maliciousness and they become a talebearer. And we are the head, not the tail. We are not to bear tails. Tail means not only is something false, slander, and a lie about another person, there's a certain vindictiveness and maliciousness, and when you add maliciousness to slander, you get talebearing. And you gotta be careful, this is a this is a step downward. It's a slow step downward. You can start out what? Gossiping. Go further back into now you don't care if you're lying about other people. First you were just telling the truth, but you wanted to get them in trouble, and you wanted to say things about them. Then you started lying on them and, and get, got into slander, and now you're adding maliciousness to the slander, and when you add slant, maliciousness to the slander, you become a talebearer. And we've got friends in our lives that are talebearers. Think about it. They don't just lie about other brothers and sisters. They do it with joy unceasingly and full of schmutz and not glory. They don't stop. They lie, they twist the truth, and they do it with a certain maliciousness, a certain vindictiveness, a certain hate to it. As if make, they, they get their jollies that way. So that a talebearer is someone who's added the seasoning of maliciousness to their gossip and to their slander. So a gossiper or a slanderer, it, unless they're stopped by your love and by your separating yourself from the unclean thing, unless something or someone or Yahweh stops them, they will invariably become a talebearer. Is any of this making sense? Yes. It's making sense, right? Yes, and I'll tell you how serious, I, this is as serious as a heart attack. I take this as seriously as fornic. You can come to me, you're know, living in sin, fornicating, we're living together, and what they do, repent, get over it, and live clean. But you start with this stuff, and I'm on your, I'm on your tail very quick. Okay? And I've thrown people out of this congregation for that. And I'll do it again, to protect the sheep. I mean. Because I don't want to be defiled. Sure. I don't want to be defiled. If you're going to tell me everything that's wrong with someone, go tell somebody else. I'm not going to tell me what's right. Whatever is lovely, whatever is righteous, whatever is clean, whatever is of any good report, Philippians 4 8, if there is any praise, any praise, you take, can't find something good to say about Henry? Then don't say it. And certainly don't start saying truths about Henry. All his shortcomings, it may be true. All, all the rabbi's shortcomings, it may be true. And start telling everybody in the congregation. Because if you don't catch yourself early, you'll wind up adding maliciousness to your gossip. That's right. Your motives will not be altruistic. And when you add maliciousness to your gossip, you wind up as a talebearer. And when you get to the talebearing stage, then you need deliverance. Then it's no longer a brother can correct you and the, and the wounds of a friend are better than the kiss of an enemy. No. At that point, you're going to need deliverance. When you become a talebearer or you associate with a talebearer, you're going to need deliverance. Why? Because you've added, that person who has added maliciousness to their gossip or slander has still got that same receptacle, but that receptacle, which is you, is no longer kosher in the eyes of Yahweh. So let's get off this Torah kick where we're, we're keeping all the Moadim, we're keeping the Shabbat, 
but we, we, we keep talking and associating and affiliating with the people that are filling our head with negatives about our brothers and sisters because Satan is the accuser of the brethren and if they are accusing the brethren then it is the characteristics and the dastardly behavior of a Satan. I told you to be quiet today. <laughs> you with me? Yes. As a shepherd, I, I, there's no sin the word of Yahweh says nothing can separate us from the love of Mashiach. Romans chapter 8. Neither death or height, principalities, powers, spiritual spiritual principalities, wickedness, nakedness, peril, famine, sword. Yahshua ya says, I am Yahshua says, I am convinced nothing. Nothing can separate us from the love of Yahweh that is in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Nothing. Romans chapter 8. So nothing can separate us from Yahweh's love. But if we if if we allow unkosher friends, we become defiled. You know how many unsaved friends Rabbi Moshe has? And I'll tell you something else. I'll go there because I don't, I don't want to, I can't cover everything today. But I don't want you to miss this. I may not get you again after this message. I may never see you again after this message. I may never hear from you again after this message. So that's why I'm going to hit you right when I can with some more truth before I slip slide away here. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So if you don't repent of listening to gossip and slander, you're allowing that person to digress into tail bearing, and when a person gets to the tail bearing stage, they need deliverance. Tail bearing. Because now there's a hatred there. The same hatred Jewish Israel had for Yeshua. It said they hated me without a cause. You know our sages, the rabbis teach, that the first temple was destroyed for fornication and adultery and a spiritual idolatry. That the people of Israel were adulterers, Ephraim Israel and Jewish Israel. There were, listen, don't lose me, listen. Our sages teach that the first temple 